Good afternoon, everyone. All right, can everybody hear me in the back? No? Okay. All right. All right, I'll try to um, yell as loud as I can here without losing my voice. All right, um, I am Naomi C. Bush. Uh, if you are here for a, the non-coders uh, secret weapon to building uh, custom applications, then you're in the right place. And uh, before we start, uh, if you could just do me a favor, and um, if you're going to chat about the talk, can you use Twitter? And if you want me to see it, uh, just tag me. Uh, here's my username here for Twitter. It's at Naomi C. Bush. Okay. All right, so um, I'm getting started. So last October, uh, there was an event here in Atlanta called 48 and 48. And what that meant uh, was just that over 100 volunteers, we all got together uh, for 48 hours to build 48 websites for 48 nonprofits. Uh, so that's where the name came from. And the organizers gave the plugin team that I was a part of a list of functionality for the websites. All right, and our job was to find the plugins that uh, they were going to use, or preferably, and this came down from the organizers, they wanted us to build it, build them ourselves. Yeah, that was funny. Uh, and we had four hours before the event uh, started to give our recommendations. So we set about uh, just searching for plugins to do all sorts of things. Uh, but the main thing that we needed to do was we needed to have a charity water type of fundraising system where a nonprofit could enlist their supporters to fundraise for them. Who here is familiar with uh, Charity Water and their campaigns? Okay. So if you're familiar with it, someone creates a personal campaign, maybe for their birthday or some other type of event, and then asks people to donate to Charity Water through their personal campaign page. Here's an example here. Uh, I don't know if you've heard uh, of this story here of Rachel. Uh, she was raising money for her ninth birthday, and I believe she had a terminal illness, and it uh, kind of went viral. Um, and so it's been very successful for Charity Water. So we looked at crowdfunding plugins, and donation plugins, and fundraising plugins, and you know, by the end it was like, okay, surely we're just going to have to build this, right? Well, the more I looked at it, the more I realized that we could actually do this with Gravity Forms with no custom coding, okay? And you may say, what? Really? Nah, you're kidding. But we did it. And we did it in an hour, because that's all the time that we had left. So with nothing but gravity forms and a few add-ons, we successfully replicated the Charity Water fundraising system. Okay, and so here on the left, you'll see the Charity Water create a campaign page, and on the right, you'll see our very crude gravity form, okay? And um, you can see it's not styled, it's not pretty, but it works, all right? It has the same uh, functionality there. And as you know, with forms, you know, its styling is, um, you know, after the fact. And so we enabled nonprofits to accept both one-time and recurring donations, all right? They could either choose from a predefined amount or they could set their own amounts. The donors could log in and cancel or update their recurring donation, see a list of all of their donation history, do one-click giving, all right, because their credit card information was saved for ease of use. They could also give in whatever currencies they wanted, and the nonprofits could now significantly increase their fundraising reach by enabling supporters and donors to create their own personal fundraising campaigns, all right, and basically use their network to raise funds on their behalf. So we actually did a whole case study on it, and uh, since we don't have time here today, if you're interested, um, for the duration of this talk, I actually have a tweet at the top of my Twitter account, and it just lets you know where to go to find the slides, okay, uh, as well as I'll have some bonuses at the end, including the full case study that we did. But basically, it was an incredible and an exhilarating experience. And when I saw what we were able to build in record time, all right, using nothing but a form builder, I knew that I wanted to share it, uh, specifically here uh, at WordCamp Atlanta. 
So it all started out six years ago uh, when I purchased a plugin that I did not know uh, would change my life. Okay. And when I say change my life, I mean like Vitamix change my life. Okay. And if you've seen the very first time that I that I spoke here at WordCamp, then you'll know why I mentioned the Vitamix. All right. So the first client project that I used this plugin on, um, for more than a contact form, was a membership organization that wanted to process their payments online. Well, don't you need a membership plugin for that or an e-commerce plugin? Well, no. Okay. We used a simple form that asked for a credit card number. Um, and when they paid, then a new user was created on our WordPress site. They were able to log in and update their profile and do all sorts of other things with just my form builder. Okay. So the first thing that I used the form builder for, other than a contact form, was a simple tiered membership system. Okay. And that was cool, but you know, I'd still only scratched the surface just a bit above the surface. Okay? And the more that I saw how other people were using a form builder, the more I realized, oh my gosh, you know, a form builder can basically do anything. And I can use it to create exactly what I want, however I want it. Okay? But even though most people already have one, they never even consider a form builder for their projects because they think, well, it's only for contact forms. Or if the client doesn't explicitly say, you know, I need to build a form. Or if you've received misinformation, like, you know, your form builder is great, but it can't do that. Okay. And I say to that, well, if your form builder can do all of this, all right, not counting all of the other 100 plus add-ons, maybe, just maybe, it can do that other thing that you're thinking of. Okay. Because that's a whole lot more than contact forms, huh? And so I would say just because you or the person that you're talking to doesn't know how to do it, doesn't mean that it can't be done. Okay, and this is something that I, you know, if you've seen me on any forums, you've probably seen me in there passionately saying, just because you don't know how, know how to do it doesn't mean that it can't be done. Your form builder can do this, all right? Um, and after all, you know, we did build a whole fundraising system in an hour, okay? And 99% of the time I see someone saying that a form builder can't do something, they just don't know how to do it, okay? So what is it about a form builder, okay? Why am I always talking about a form builder? I'm surprised some of you came back, okay? Because I'm always <laughs> talking about a form builder. Well, if you think about it, what does a form builder do, okay? All it does is receive input and then do something with or process that input, okay? And so essentially what it is, is it's almost like a black box. Give me all your info and I will take and do something with that info, okay? And so a contact form is an easy example. Give me your name, email address, and a message, and that's the input, and then I will, your, I'll email your message to you, I'll save your message to your WordPress database, your name and your email address will be added to my mailing list or to my CRM or to my support desk and you can receive a text message. Okay? So that's just a simple way of giving some input, here are some of the things that I can do with that input. Okay? Now that's a very simple example, but if you notice with a form builder there are actually no limits on what type of input you can receive and no limits on what you can do with that information. If you see these fields here from a, uh, from a standard form builder, you see something like single line text, paragraph text, drop down. I mean, there's no assumptions made about that information. All right? There's so much more that you can do with that other than just a name and an email address and a message field. And sending an email and saving the information to WordPress isn't the only thing that you can do with that information. All right, I could just as easily have said, give me your name, email address, your business name, your business address, your business type, your taxpayer ID, and your signature, and I will generate a W-9 for you in PDF format and email it to you and to your HR contact. Okay? Or give me a name, an email, a date, a time, a location, a contact number, 
and then I'll add your event to our public calendar, I'll email you a confirmation, and I'll display it as a pin on our event map here. How about give me a name, an email address, a job description, and I'll add it to our list of searchable jobs. I'll give you a link for you to go back and update the job. Others can apply to that job. I'll email you their application and add it to your Google spreadsheet of applicants, and then you can mark the job as fulfilled or closed when you're done. Okay? So as you can see, we're, we're, just, we're building here. Okay? There's so much that you can do. How about this one? Okay. Give me your name, your email address, a credit card number, and then what I'll do is I'll charge you a monthly subscription, which will go directly into my bank account. All right. <laughs> I'll send you a PDF invoice every month. I'll create a new user for you on my WordPress site. I'll save your credit card. So then when you come back to my website and make another purchase, all of your information is pre-filled, and you can, use your save, you can use your saved credit card. You can cancel or change your subscription at any time. And you'll get special members-only pricing by default without any special coupons. Okay? Or as in our earlier example, you can give me your name, email address, campaign name, your goal, type, image description, and we'll allow people to come and donate under your campaign and show you how much your campaign has raised. Okay. So, as you can see, we named just a few use cases that you can probably think of other plugins other than a form builder that, that you can use for those. So you might say, well, oh, I need a mailing list plugin, or I need a membership plugin, or I need an event calendar plugin, or surely I'll need a developer to do this for me. But we just did all of these things with just a form builder, okay? Without any coding, no coding required. And how we did this is because by design, a form builder is what I call non-opinionated and open-ended. It simply receives input, any input, and processes that input with no assumptions. And so what do I mean by non-opinionated and no assumptions? Well, let's say we have an e-commerce plugin. A common request that you'll see is, how do I add my own fields to the checkout form so that I can collect custom information? All right, or how do I collect custom information for a particular product? And why do you commonly see this request? Well, because the e-commerce plugin has an opinion about a, what information a standard checkout page should collect. And what it'll do is it will create the checkout page to only collect that information. And it can't possibly predict all of the information that you might want to collect for a product. <coughs> However, a form builder doesn't take an opinion. Okay? And it actually can't take an opinion because it has no idea what information you're going to ask it to collect. Okay? And so this simple functionality of receiving input and processing that input is what makes a form builder an extremely flexible asset and what I call your secret weapon all right, for building exactly what you need. It's kind of like Legos, all right, where you can become a master builder, choosing just the pieces that you need to build whatever it is that you can think of, and even whatever curveball your client may throw at you. Okay. All right, so who here has uh, had the problem of needing to do something complicated? All right. <laughs> All right, and so you ask around for plug-in recommendations. I know some of you have. I've, I've seen it. There's like an Atlanta WordPress uh, group, I think, on Google. Google Plus, and I see people, do you know of a plugin that can do this, or do you know of a plugin that can do that? All right, and so you receive a few that sort of do what you want, but not quite the way you want it. All right, and so you settle, all right, and you force fit the plugin into your situation. <coughs> or you conclude that it has to be custom built, and so you start the whole process of hiring a developer. All right, that fits in the budget, which brings a whole different set of challenges if you've ever tried to hire a developer before, okay? Um, and so what about the opposite, where you just need to do something simple, like take a payment? And so you think that your only option is to turn to a huge e-commerce plugin with a whole shopping cart and checkout system. If only, if 
only, if only there was a better way. <laughs> and so my goal here today uh, was to show you that if you need a solution for something custom, okay, that isn't readily supported by an off-the-shelf application, all right, or you just don't need a big application, and that custom thing that you need to do has something to do with receiving input and then processing that input, a form builder could be just what the doctor ordered. All right? It's a great candidate for your job because it's a good middle ground between custom development and then a plug-in that does exactly what I want. And if you think you need to hire a developer, well, consider hiring your form builder instead. All right? Ask, can my form builder do this? And if it can't do it readily, can I hire someone to build just a customization for the form builder instead of building something completely from scratch? Okay. Let me give you another example here. Oops. All right, let's take our event calendar example and add a few more pieces. All right. So if you remember from our event calendar example, you gave some information for an event. It was added to our list of events, displayed you know, as a map on our, um, displayed as a pin on our map. And so now let's allow people to RSVP to your event. All right. And then let's send them an email confirmation and send you an email notification and let you download a list of all the attendees for the event. This is a form I actually built. It's been up and running for about three years now. Um, and now let's add a few more. Let's allow people to pay for the event. And we'll charge their credit card, send them a receipt, and then send them a PDF ticket with a scannable barcode for easy entrance. Okay? Wait a minute. Did we just build Eventbrite? <laughs> I think we did. Okay? And here's another example. Um, I had a client who they had basically tried all of the uh, hosted payment systems. I don't know if you're familiar with Gumroad, um, uh, Moon Clerk, what's another one? Uh, I can't remember the name of the other one. Um, but those are all these you know, nice hosted systems for payment, but he had a really complicated billing set up. Okay, where first of all, he had three packages, okay, and for current customers, they needed to receive a discount on those three packages, and there needed to be early bird discounts for those packages. So in essence, there were so many different prices, and he had coupons, all right? And so none of the hosted systems could handle this. And so what we did was we did it with Gravity Forms, where if you were a current customer, well, first, if it was before a certain date, then the price of the product was a, you know, you had a certain price for that product. And then if you were a customer, you received another discount on that product. And then after, automatically, after that early bird date was over, the price automatically <coughs> changed over um, to the regular price. And we were able to do coupons with both PayPal and Stripe. So he had two different uh, payment methods on there. So that's just an example of uh, some of the complicated custom things that you can do. All right. And so I know that there's normally a lot of questions here. So what I've done is, uh, for some of the things that I've talked about here, what I've done is I've actually created a, a package of bonuses, all right, where all of the off-the-shelf tools that I used in those examples, the case study for the fundraising system, the case study for the billing system that I uh, just mentioned, as well as the slides with all of my uh, speaker notes, and for some of those plugins, they are paid plugins, and some of the authors have generously decided to uh, give discounts if, any, if anyone is interested. So I've put that all together for you. And again, I have that uh, tweet um, on my Twitter account. It's right at the top, and it just gives you the link to where you can go, and um, all of that stuff will be sent right to you. Okay? Um, And also, I'm happy to answer any afterwards, any, you know, can my form builder do this? Or is this a good job for my form builder? I'm happy to answer any of those type of questions. But now I'm going to go ahead and answer any questions here in the room. Okay? Thank you.
I think you had your hand on up. On the reoccurring uh, membership, can the form send you a reminder on when the payments are due or coming up? It can send you a reminder when the payments are due. Um, the particular solution that I'm referring to, it, um, it sends you a notification if your payment failed and it'll give you the link for you to go back in and say, okay, hey, update your, your billing information. Um, and it will, it will retry, I think, about three times. So it'll send you that notification three times, and then it'll cancel your subscription. And it does that automatically, and that's actually a function of the payment processor that you're using. So if you're using Stripe, uh, it'll do that for you. And then what it'll do is it will send you a, um, if your payment was successful, then it'll send you a notification. Yes. Um, just a quick question. You talked earlier about kind of the forms and kind of putting them together, and it, it seemed like that was pretty um, straightforward. But then on the back end, with all the different things, like is, is that stuff like with the, the fact that it'll send you, you know, your receipt and show you, you know, your spreadsheet and stuff like that? Is that involve coding? No. So Everything that I've mentioned here today is no coding. So okay. how, how does that? Like how did you manage that stuff? Like all the different things. Sure. So if you remember this slide here, what this is, is these are actually a list of add-ons. So they're just additional plugins that you plug into your form builder, and it will add the functionality that you're looking for. So for example, this PDF one, there's, um, there's an add-on that will generate PDFs. Um, and there's an add-on that will do all of those things. Who here is familiar with Zapier? OK. Zapier? And so if there's not an explicit add-on for something that you want to do, I think Zapier connects with like Zapier, like Happier. Oh, Zapier. Zapier. I actually looked it up to learn how to pronounce it. So, <laughs> um, so do, all these, do all of these, um, they're not plugins, what do you call them, add-ons? Yes. Do they all work with gravity forms or with RP? These are all, this particular form is just because one of the other form builders, their website was down, and so I couldn't get a screenshot, but um, any of the professional form builders have, have these add-ons. Okay. Yes. Oh, my take question you. was, do you prefer Gravity Forms over Ninja Forms? Or? You know, it just, it depends on what, what is going to do the job and what you're comfortable with. Um, me personally, because, like I said, I got gravity forms like six years ago when it was the only one. Um, so that's what I'm comfortable in. But any of the solutions are, are fine. Like I said, uh, I think the top three are gravity forms, ninja forms, and formidable as far as a professional solution. Okay. So if you're using something like contact form seven, you know, then you won't get as much. Okay. You had your hand up. Sir. Yeah. <coughs> How would you compare this to uh, some of the solutions, the all-purpose solutions like Type tool set or pods? Is it, is it just a function of the fact that there aren't enough uh, API connections for those things existing as add-ons to, to build custom solutions? So that's that's a good question. Those solutions are for creating custom content types. Okay, you can create forms with those solutions, but they're for creating custom content types. And so what you'll find is that, and I actually built it, um, I helped build the uh, user interface, but there's a Gravity Forms add-on for pods, okay? So that you can, from your front-end forms, you can then uh, send information and create pods, okay? You. For the plugin itself, I mean, yeah, yes. And also there is an encryption add-on. So if you're doing things like uh, you need to be HIPAA compliant and um, you're taking financial data, if you're taking financial data, first of all, um, the credit card information, the credit card numbers will be encrypted. So that's one thing. And then uh, there is an encryption plugin that will encrypt all of the data that you take in. And then there's another uh, add-on that will actually redact some of the data. And I know that because I built it, because some a client asked me for it, because they needed, you know, to redact some data. So. Oh, absolutely! You should use a um, a secure certificate. 
Um, yes, sir. Just another quick question. With the W9, what was the add-in that you used for that one? Gravity PDF, and that's just for Gravity Forms. Ninja Forms has a PDF one. Um, Formidable has a PDF uh, in integration as well. Yes, sir. Um, if, if I have a need where when someone answers a certain question a certain way on a form, it leads into a different question or branches. Conditional logic. That is um, that is one of the default. Um, that's the default functionality for a form builder. So you can have sections, multiple pages. If a person says this, then show them this section. Um, if they don't do this, then you know show them another section. So, yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Um, with, with the uh, PDFs, you can attach those to the notification. That's uh, default functionality of that PDF integration. These are not the notifications. These are the 12. The emails are the notifications in Gravity right. Forms. But there, there's more than one. There might be PDFs. They might be images. images and yes, you can, uh, you can attach the images to the notification. There's well, a... Not the actual image. I see what you're saying. Um, well, the PDFs, the actual PDF is attached. For the images, I don't think I've ever tried to attach the actual image. Um, how you could do it, though, is um, since the notifications allow HTML, then what you could do is you could um, put it in the body of the, of the email. Just use the image tag. And that will have it, you know, kind of embedded in there. Does that make sense? No? So, you know how if you have a web page, right, and you want to include an image on that web page, then you just use the HTML image tag. Yeah, but I want them to open up the Outlook. Okay. Open up Outlook. Mm-hmm. Okay, so there is an integration called, for Gravity Forms specifically, it's called Gravity Forms Notification Attachments. I would check that out. Gravity Forms Notification Attachments. And that's, uh, that's on the WordPress repository. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Have you looked at or done anything with WP App Studio? No, sir. So that's an application development platform you <laughs> yeah, so I, I think it's just like types and views and, um, you know, where you can kind of build these custom, con you know, custom application type things. The reason why um, I'm doing this on a form builder is because everyone is more likely to have a form builder. And so it's an opportunity for you to use what you already have. And it's very powerful and uh, very stable. Okay. Anyone else? No? Yes. Oh, yes, yes, that is a gravity form, yes. <laughs> yes, it is a gravity form. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Um, I'll stick around for a little bit.